Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, by popular request, we're going to go back down to um, Arizona, or excuse me, the uh, Utah area to the Arches National Park, and we're going to paint kind of this southwest uh, scene here. I'm going to put a little bit of water here in the reference photo that I had up, I have up here that I got from Adobe Stock. I uh, it does it has a dry riverbed. I'm going to put a little water in it, just like after the rains. Okay, so we'll have some fun. The palette that I'm going to use today, this is my standard YouTube palette. I am adding a gray here. Uh, this is the light value gray. I will put a list of all the colors that I'm using and everything in the video description down below. Uh, so check that out. There'll be a list and then links for all the stuff that I use here on the channel. Okay, so you'll find it there. Video description. Okay, so the board here is about 24 inches by uh, about 15 inches. So I wanted it a little bit of a landscape and uh, then I sketched on my design. Now, what I will do is I will put a... Uh, the reference photo that uh, you know that I'm using into the membership area so you'll be able to take your sketch off of that and I'm going to add quite a bit in here I just sketched out a couple of the main elements and stuff but I'm going to add quite a bit in here uh, to the painting so we'll use it just you know me I'll use it just as a reference okay all right so we're going to paint this on kind of a, a little bit of an overcast day but there's a lot of depth to it and I want to concentrate on the depth to it Basically, as you're looking through uh, the horizon here, we have to set up kind of a vanishing point. This end rides is up a bit, so this is a good vanishing point right down here. Normally, you set it on the horizon, but this kind of area right here rises back up. So basically, it's going down where the water is going to be flowing down away from us, and then it's going to rise back up again. So the vanishing point would actually come somewhere around here, right along your eye line, which will put it right about in there. I do a lot of these types of uh, perspective studies and stuff into our uh, color theory class and stuff so but you can find all kinds of stuff on the uh, on YouTube and stuff if you're interested in finding things about perspective. Okay so that's what we'll set up there so I'm going to put my my light sky here my we'll use atmospheric and linear perspective to drop back there. I'll start back there because those colors just kind of give me a, a real good ballpark. This uh, Video, this value scale, which we're going to use today, is very, very important. You can see I use it a lot. I put a lot of color on it. Um, this, this value scale is, again, the link for it to download it. It's a free thing that we have is in the uh, video description. I'm going to take my larger brush. This is a uh, uh, brush. It used to be my varnish brush. It's a, it's a fusion uh, larger two-inch brush, very soft. And I'm going to make a real light, very, very light, eight or a nine uh, kind of an aqua color and it's going to be gray so I'm going to put out some of my light gray with this and some of my white here we're going to make that real super light gray color that can go right along our horizon line. We're going to use a little more gray in our horizon line today than you know you normally see me do so we're going to lighten it up. Now acrylics dry uh, a good 10% darker. So if you want it to be about a value 8, you got to put it up here about a value 9. And that's probably right around the 9 that I, I'm looking for. I'll probably add just a touch more white right to that. And uh, that will that will drop down to what, about where I want. Yeah, that's going to be a good color. We'll add some other colors to it. But this color is going to be relatively important for us for our painting. Because we'll use it to add perspective and depth, uh, visual, what we call atmospheric perspective into the background uh, here today. So this is a nice light color uh, right through here. We want to keep that light. So it's, you know, the board here is just a coat of white on it. I actually use, uh, those of you that follow along with me and, and follow the lessons, I actually use uh, a product that uh, we make called uh, Canvas Prep Medium, even though this is a board. And I like, I like painting on the boards, but especially if I'm going to do a lot of detail. But uh, this canvas prep medium works just absolutely wonderful for that. I'm going to put just a little lighter color, very, very light along that horizon line here. And, you know, you can also get a lot of interest just by, you know, when I paint with the acrylics, I use my paper towel a lot to model that. And, and see, I just want to... 
I don't want it to be a solid color. I know it's kind of hard to cameras, even though they're 4K cameras, they can't always pick up everything. But I want to model the color in there just a bit. That helps me get some atmosphere to it. Now, we'll blue up. As we go up there to the top, looking up at that one there, it actually has a little more violet, but I think I'm going to keep this right along with just some more phthalo here. We'll go a little bit more blue into it, taking it down to probably a, a six or so in value here. That's probably a good six. Yeah, that's a good six. It'll dry right down to a six. Let's put just a bit of extender in here. And rather than using big, long, uh, motions of the brush. I use just this kind of crisscross motion here, which helps add the atmosphere. And then right here in the center, I'm going to add a little more extender medium here to this. So I have a little cap of extender medium out here. And this is the, the Derivan Open Medium, which you've seen me use in so many videos. I have some of it out. The extender medium slows it down and also thins out the paint. But see this lovely atmosphere I can put in? Just by crisscrossing that a little bit, it almost makes it look kind of like a cloudy kind of day there. And that's what I'm looking for. And I'll, so I put on the light, I put on the dark, then I come right in between the two and just kind of add some of that atmosphere. And maybe just a bit more here and there of some darker, because I'm going to want to eventually kind of streak some clouds through here. So I'll have a few areas just a bit darker, but see, I like that kind of motion and you can just kind of pull that through, just increase that atmosphere there. And if you get a lot of brush marks in it when you're using a brush like this, it just shows you're working too thin. So we don't want to work uh, too thin. Now, so that's, that's my good sky. This, as everything recedes, I have to make it more and more like this, uh, this background here. I'll show you that in just a second. But to start out the painting, one of the things I like to do is I like to come in and put some of the colors. And this is right in this little rock area is where I want to get a lot of interest in that area. I'm going to take some extender because I want this to be, uh, to be transparent. Not dry real fast, but I want it to also be transparent. And I just used the blue that's in my brush. I'm going to grab some of my burnt sienna that I have here. Burnt sienna, a little bit of the green. These are good darks. And I'll model this together. Maybe a little bit of yellow oxide. And maybe even a touch of the blue in there like that. And I'm just going to wash this through this area right in here. This is going to, this is where we're going to have some of the rocks. And so what I like to do, and I know it sounds kind of crazy to, to this, is I set up the back and I'll set up the front. Now, I then just kind of tap through. This is a trans, a little bit transparent here. So you can still see your drawing through it. But you see, you get some of this modeling of this color that's on there. And, you know, the modeling of the color is so very important, uh, you know, to our paintings. And I might even take this a little bit more uh, transparent right back here and just wash in. See, just wash in a bit of the color like this. You're already starting your painting out here uh, with some of these just variations of color and so when I go to build the more opaque and some textured areas which I'm going to show you then I can also let the the uh, other shadow areas become more transparent there's a good rule in all the Prima those of you that are newer painters there's a good rule in all the Prima that uh, um, light areas are opaque and texturized and shadow areas so we'll have shadow areas right up and through here and everything are more transparent so you paint more transparently in the shadows more opaque and textured into the highlights and that's where you get a lot of visual depth into your painting okay and it really does work let's take our brush here now if you want you can leave these colors out here which is really good because this is going to be my receding area this will be my advancing area you or you can take a little damp paper towel and wipe off some of the some of the excess i'm going to kind of leave that let's put in the receding area so we'll take some of this some nice um the, the cliffs and the the uh, um, structures here that you find in and around arches and stuff are kind of yellow oranges. And yellow orange, as it becomes more atmospheric, actually heads a little bit more red. So we'll head just a bit more red and we'll add some of the atmosphere to this 
here. And you'll, I wish you could see that that's just, just that color that's right back here. So as we come back here along our horizon line, now I want to look at the, the kind of value. That's, in the reference photo, that's really, really close. But I want to make it, uh, I want to get it close, but then I want to lighten it because it's going to darken down. So I want to lighten that. See, just a little bit lighter here. And you, I use a big brush because it makes a more indistinct edge here. And we want this to kind of go back. It's going to climb up a bit. A couple of little interesting bumps there for uh, structures and stuff. Maybe that's a bit too much back there. Right back there. And that's, I mean, you're painting, you got to think, you got to think way in the back and not very much stuff going on back there. And blur that back edge. You can have a little bit of a horizontal stuff, but blur that back edge back there. And that the more you blur it, the more distance you create. Let's come back up over here. We'll put that horizon line back here, maybe just a bit of it. We'll just drop that down there. So that'll be the horizon line picking up on the other side over here. So that's good. Let's just uh, thin that just a bit, a little water or a little extender, and we'll just walk that down here. And I use different, see how I use different parts of the brush, and sometimes I'll pull a, a, a horizontal, sometimes a vertical as I'm coming forward. So I get some brush calligraphy in here. I like to have that. Sometimes I'll move my finger in and see that just gives you some some movement interest there that's really going to give us a lot of depth towards the end of the painting here. Okay, so I like this photo that I have here because it really has three planes of reference. One right here, one right here, and one right here. And in good landscape painting, if you can create three planes, and I always say this is a rule, at least three planes, you'll get more depth within your painting. This is if you want to have a lot of depth. If I'm painting a little river surrounded by a bunch of trees, no, you don't get the depth. But if you're painting out here where you're painting the horizon line and the skyline and stuff here, you want to get that depth. You want to have at least three planes. So this will work out pretty nice, get the three planes. So the next plane coming up is right in here. And to do that, I'm just going to slide this way. We'll pick up some more of that red, a little bit more burnt sienna right in here. And this has a lot of, we'll pull a, a bit of the horizontal structures, but it has a lot of vertical structures in it as well. And I'm just going to tap along like this. See how I like to use a large brush and break that top plane that, you know, so you don't get too much of a straight line. That one's a bit straight, so I'll break it there. You don't want to have a, a real harsh line with your first go through because then it's harder to soften out later if you want to. We'll bring in just a bit more of a definitive line right here that will help us and we'll pull in some nice verticals here as well. That'll help us say that this is more just a touch farther forward. Let's raise this up just a bit higher so I don't get a tangent line between this one and that one and that'll help separate it a bit as well. So just a bit of that right there. So you can see some of the, the differences uh, there between this value becoming a little darker, this one becoming more like the sky, and the little darker color is coming just a touch farther forward. Now there's some beautiful shadows in this structure back here, so I'm just going to add a, a touch of blue and stuff and just quickly emulate in a few vertical suggestions there for shadows. When I'm painting plain air, I'm out in the field painting, and stuff I do this real quick because I just try to capture the main look and the colors and uh, you know I don't get it I don't get involved in too many details and we should keep that in mind right now for where we are now let's come back up here uh, to this one and uh, we'll do some of the we'll grab just a bit more let's add a bit more yellow to it yellow's going to come into the palette more as we go uh, into the uh, the foreground and basically what it is if you're talking about atmospheric colors and I studied physics in college and colors and how it all works and stuff and how the atmosphere how the nitrogen and oxygen you know do what we call scattering through the atmosphere and everything um, but 
what happens is the colors become just a little more red out here and they'll become a little more orange, a little bit more yellow, warmer up into the front. So we'll add those yellows back up here. Um, let's add a bit of extender here and we'll work. So we're going to be working for, we'll pull down here some of this and I'm going to leave some of this nice brush marks. This is why I like that larger brush as I pull down here and put in some of this structure right here. And you can see I don't pull too long. I don't want to make too long of a work, but I'll I'll just read that just a bit there. And I'll leave this kind of streaky. This is why it's really the paint's really loose right here. I'm just picking up some of these these edges of it here. And as I pull in some of this structure here, you know, I want to leave that little vertical blue line right there. That's right in there on that one that I see right up there. So I'm just looking at my reference. All the other thing is, those that study with me know that I have a big 42 inch TV. It's a it's a 4K TV, so it's considered a monitor. And it's sitting right here, and I'm looking at it right here. I love to look. It's almost like I'm looking outside. I'm standing right there. I'm looking at this huge thing, and it's about four feet from me, so it's filling the area there. I used to always work off of photos, but man, I really do love a big TV and you know anymore they're they're pretty reasonable in price and you get one of those right for your set it up by your easel and you can see so much more here in your painting now we'll just model some of that there like that there and so see all that modeling when you're first using that large brush like this this can do a lot of the painting structural painting for you here just use that large brush, pull that down, sometimes pull a nice horizontal in there. We'll pull some of that down here. That works pretty well. There'll be a lighter band coming right down through there, which I'll switch to a smaller brush to do some of that. Let's pick up some of this and just kind of pull that down. Maybe a, a, every once in a while, a nice little horizontal. So you, when you're painting some of the Southwest and and you know the uh, mesas and bluffs and stuff like that, you know you get all different kinds of angles and and stuff here. We have a lot of these kinds of structures here in Nebraska as well, um, but they uh, you know slightly different colors, but they're wonderful, fun to paint. Let's put some of this. This is a nice shadowy one right back here. A little different color. And so I'm just, you know, I'm fracturing what we call fracturing the edges so I don't put them on super sharp using different corners of my brush here. There, that next one there's a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to add a bit of the white and a bit of the yellow here. Change that color just a touch. So we'll pick up a slight variation of it as it comes back to this one here, which I'll end up going back behind that one. And this light color, now I'm going to go to a slightly smaller brush here. This is a number eight, so it's not like super small. And uh, I'll work this. And as I start to work these lighter colors, see they're going to become more opaque as well. Lighter colors become more opaque in this. So I'm just going to come down drop the angle and what this light ridge is going to be right here and bring that on down so you're going to see like the side the side of it and the face of it there we'll put just a bit of that right in there and I always paint with a paper towel in my hand to kind of wipe it just a bit and uh, you know it cleans it off cleans off the excess paint here because I paint with a lot of paint. When I start to go with the lights, I start to put on a lot of paint. Let's put in this angled, and your brush calligraphy, the angles, what you do, and see, I, I turn my brush to get some different colors coming off, so I get a little bit of streaking, but the angle and the calligraphy will help set, like this is gonna be a little slope there. And it just starts it out, we're not being perfect, it's just starting it out right there, okay? Um, it'll be a bit lighter a bit lighter version of it right back here. We'll have some refining for it, but you can see, you know, even with my quick, with the just the quick stuff that we're doing here, you know, we're starting to set up some of this depth, which is gonna be really important. A little bit more gray. 
some more greens and light colors and stuff. It's going to be uh, some of the other desert colors that will be in here because of bushes and stuff like that. And um, I'm going to keep this kind of real light gray. There's a super light gray. Let's put that in first right back here. But that's coming off of the other bluff over there here. And it'll come right along here, right along like that. See, so just turn your brush and see by modeling, by modeling my brush, you can see I don't, I don't over mix. There's a, there's a point here that is you watch this where when I start the painting off, I do a lot of what I call model, model the brush, which is what I do on roses and everything. I don't mix to a, a specific tone. When I come in to paint later on a very specific area, yes, I might put in a, a real specific tone. But see, when I'm painting back here, see that interest that that gives that right back there, see? And that works really nice. Let's add just, there's just a bit more dark and some stuff going on right here. And see, I'll just use the tip of my brush here and just scrub just a bit and give the impression. I'm an, um, not a pure impressionist. I'm, uh, I like to call myself a, a kind of an impressionist or... Today, I guess the modern term for everything is representational artist. I'm not, I used to be a realist, and I'm not a hyper-realist or anything by any point, manner or means. I, I like to take the impression of areas and kind of capture the color and tone and movement, but not get wrapped up in all of the super details. Let's get a little more dark, a little bit. Those will just look like bushes and stuff like that back there into the distance. You know, back as we set that distance, that looks pretty good. Little touches of them, that color will will do more later on. But just just to break some of that up, and before, I'm putting some of this in before I come up here. I'm going to get these real darks, just to let you know. Sometimes, I mean, I've painted this Southwest scene several times, and just to let you know what our real dark is going to be, our core dark. I'm going to take some of my Burnt sienna, some green, a little bit of blue, a little bit of violet. These are colors I will use in the core real dark areas. One of the dark dark areas, shadow areas, is going to be right up in here. So in this painting that we're doing here, the light colors recede, the dark colors come forward. So look at how dark that is. And sometimes for those of you that are beginners, this is really good to put in a couple of shadow areas. And I kind of put them on my sketch here, but... Um, couple of shadow areas that you know where something's going to be that will help you, uh, you know, uh, see the tone so that you don't get these. This is as dark as you can go in the painting, and it has to be right up here, right up into the front, right up in this area. And see, I like to use that brush and just kind of drag it so I can see some of those other little tones in there. This one is a little bit harsh for me. I'll just break the edges. I'll wipe my brush and just break those edges just a bit. See, I like, you can see it's hard for you with the camera, but there's burnt siennas and some of those other tones in there that are just wonderful. We'll get some of those tones right in there, but we'll leave it slightly transparent. Shadows are slightly transparent, and then we'll get the opacity uh, here with our, uh, with our, our light colors and stuff. So we'll leave those in just, slightly transparent for right now okay and uh, there's another one another kind of a rock right up here which i didn't sketch on which i'll do right now we'll put just a bit of the see i like that kind of stuff see the colors that are coming in there mixing up in there that works really really well matter of fact some of those colors let's you can add open medium now what's open medium uh extender is very thin Everything I use is non-toxic, so don't worry about it. Matter of fact, you eat extender every day. Um, it's a, it's in a lot of foods, but it's very transparent, very slick, and it makes everything um, very thin. This and it slows down the drying time. This slows down the drying time, but see how much thicker it is. Okay, so if I want to, you know, feel like the thickness of paint, but still have some transparency to it. I really love the open medium. I put in probably almost an equal amount of open medium to anything that I'm painting. And as I come up here, I want to build this secondary little area right here. 
that's coming off. See, I, I can put on this shadow here. Look how transparent and how much modeling I can put in there. See, and, and it looks like I've done a whole bunch of work, but in reality, I haven't. And that's just the open medium and use different corners of your brush, adding some of that, uh, that movement interest that I like. So I will, you know, if I want to come in here like this and add some nice verticals or a horizontal look like that, if I add a lot of open medium to it, I get this lovely translucency or transparency, which preserves that a la prima look and still getting some of that nice depth to it there as well. So open medium is fantastic for doing this. Now there's other mediums in the heritage. If you're working with the heritage acrylics, there's another medium that will do this, but won't dry as slow as open medium. And that's called faux finish medium. And the faux finish is made for doing kind of a faux fin marbleizing and stuff like that, faux finishing. And uh, it does fantastic looks as well, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't slow down the drying time, not quite as much. It gives it about a 30 minute working time where the open medium can give you a couple hours depending on how much you use. But see how much I put in there. And so I'll pick up quite a bit of that paint, but this paint is very, it's very slippery because of the open medium and just slides right along the surface there. And I pull, if you wanna keep strokes, and this is what I told you when we painted the ship and the ocean, in a lesson just a couple weeks ago it's on the channel we painted that trawler and i called it racing for home and when you're painting that ocean if you want to maintain that movement to that ocean just like if you want to maintain that movement those color tones to that rock pull slow start slowing down and being very precise about what you do see and you you the the brush does not wiggle and so it does not make any kind of softer edges with it and stuff. You just get that lovely change of tone there with that. There'll be some nice horizontals here, pulling across here. So, and if I was doing this as a big studio painting, I would do this many, many times. When I do a plain air, I try to find ways to just quickly with my brush, capture the impression of the object here with the light and shadow mostly i look for light and shadow and uh, grab some interest and stuff like that and uh, and and i determine just how much i'm going to put into the painting how much time i'm going to put into the painting but this open medium like this works really really well and will help you generate some of those nice little shadow interest like that so that works really well so i'll be doing that through it just like that throughout that whole thing and then I'll make it even a little bit more transparent sometimes I'll take the open medium and thin it out also with a little bit of the extender and I'll come in here and use that into a further back area here to get some very soft interest back there see but not as much as what's coming forward here okay now for the rocks, the forward rocks, the forward area that's right here. Let me show you this for just a minute and then we'll take some painting time. But what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to head in a bit more opaque. So I'll stay away from the open medium first and I'll use some yellows, some of maybe make a brighter uh, orange here too. And get some of these yellows, oranges, some whites. And I'll grab, I'll grab just a real close, it's mostly yellow, if I, uh, mostly yellow and stuff. If I want it to tone down a little bit of green and burnt sienna, these are great, great, great gray colors here. The burnt sienna and the green make great grays. Look at those beautiful grays. And I can add that right in there and see how it grays that color down. These are great ways to make all kinds of forward rock colors. So this that's a that's that rock that's a great uh, great color to kind of start out with here on this rock and i don't want to cover up yet everything that i have and i want to model this some other colors in here it, and as i put this on so I, you know it's not just one solid color and we'll start putting in this rock now it's there's going to be a lot of difference here right now it's going to be pretty close to what i have on there but you see, I'm just getting some color in here and I'm getting some opaque structure, what I call this structure of it on. Let's get a little bit lighter. 
because we're going to be we're going to be working in here with uh, you know light planes, receding planes, and stuff like that. But uh, let's get this other little light structure right in there, and then there's slightly little gray structure of it coming down there like that. Okay, this little rock coming in, one setting on top of the other. We'll model in some of this other color right down through here. There we go. I don't know if the camera I mean, can pick up, microphones can pick up. We have a tremendous windstorm that has come through here yesterday and this afternoon. The winds are sustained at 45 miles an hour with gusts to 75 miles an hour. Almost hurricane strength out there. And uh, every once in a while I hear that whipping around. Now I don't have to worry about here. Our gallery or art center here is the walls are one thick foot of brick. And so here's this, but you do hear it whistling on the windows every once in a while. So there's going to be that rock. We're going to have some more rocks right up in here, right up into this area. So I'll use, I'll, I'll get some of those, these started. And, you know, vary the colors. You can even add a little bit of the gray that comes from burnt sienna and blue. That's a beautiful gray as well. You can even touch some of your other gray here of the uh, the medium gray that you have we're going to start adding all of these tones right into these rocks here as well so and because we're going to want a lot of variation and i want a lot of stuff going on let's flip over to some burnt sienna see those beautiful tones here as you work that and work small small touches because that's going to give your rocks lots of interest okay small touches we're going to have um, some bushes and stuff like that, which is going to be some of our toned greens. And we'll get some yellow greens here, a bit of burnt sienna in it. I'll keep some transparency to it right now, so I'll add some open medium. And uh, so we're going to work those, and I want just rough little areas here, nice little desert bushes and trees here. And we'll be very rough. Here, see I use different corners of my brush here, different, and I can smear it out a bit. Different artists have different ways to push them. I like to paint them with all different kinds of motions here, and uh, very simplistically. So I push and I pull on my corner, and these soft fusion brushes just work so well when you start to, uh, you know, manipulating them like that. They work so very well. Get a bit more blue into some of this, a little darker, these tones. So you get a bit of variation in there. I especially want it right up in here. So this is the first, this is what I really call basically our block in, our understanding of where some of these, these elements and objects are going to go. And uh, then we'll work even more detail and stuff up front. There'll be a larger, see, we step off of that one. We'll push one right in here. Use different corners, roll your brush up, push it up here. That makes that lovely desert kind of bush there. It's right there. Some of these other lines of them. Some artists do it really, really fast. You can blur edges just a bit like that with your paper towel. See, that just grabs even more movement in there. Um, grab some softer gray. Tone some of that down a bit. Just good, just fun. These are just real fun, especially to do more impressionistic. We'll put some more land and stuff in there, but as we come over this way, you know, on the reference photo, we have some larger ones here, which I'll push more color into, right in there like that. And we'll push, we'll, we'll make some of these, we'll, we'll put some uh, larger branches and stuff like that as well but uh, yeah right here we'll push some we're gonna put some dirt and stuff in between there but you can see see as you step back you can see okay that's gonna get some of the the trees and stuff I'll have one right over here kind of soft and uh, some of this you know like I'll grab this gray as I go I'll just take some of these colors more just a touch more gray which is what I see into the, the photo there as we work this was we'll worked at just a bit lighter maybe a bit of our other colors here as we work the horizontal here and I'll work right into the edge of that 
bush to to soften that out a bit. But these horizontals, these horizontals are this like this is a horizontal. Those are really important, especially for what we call linear perspective. You have to leave a few of those streaks this way like this because that gives you that perspective, that perspective depth here. So I'll take some of this. Let's take some of this, maybe a bit light yellow. I just look at the reference photo and I, I just kind of capture the area there. And I want to get a good, nice, slightly angled horizontal here that will give me some of that shape of that back hill there, see? Now, in the reference photo, there's a, a touch lighter area back there. And let's just go ahead and push that in right now. Lighter, I go slightly more opaque. Let's just push some of that light because that's just a good difference right there. And let some of that come in right there. We'll pull that hill down into that. There, see, the subtle variations like that between this light uh, red-orange and down here with a little bit more gray and green in it just gives you some lovely interest of the, you know, the southwest, that southwest interest that can come along through there. And you can tap some of those colors in there, but leave some of that streaking in there because that creates a, a lot of uh, interest there, you know. So look for small little things. And, you know, it, on a painting, you know, it, it's there's some that I do that are real quick and I don't put very much detail in. This one I'm going to put just a bit more in for you here. But uh, so that's what I'm kind of looking at. This light color, these grays is here. You know, I like some of that movement there. If I, you know, there's a really uh, just a tiny touch of a light orange movement back there that I just might capture right back there. Tap a bit of that, maybe a touch lighter right here. As I, so I'm heading this way to go back in my painting, heading this way to come forward in my painting. And that's a good way to kind of set up your palette. I don't always do that, but it is a great way, especially for you beginners. Now you see, you get that. And if I really get that nice light, and sometimes the light fools you because the acrylics dry darker. But if I'm right here and I get that nice light there, I not only, you know, push back that or push forward this tree, but I, I bring forward this little cliff face right there and I get just a touch more depth, you know, back there in the back of my painting. And then I can take the softer orange and maybe add just a bit more stuff back here maybe bring this one just a little bit forward. So see, it's a, a real fine little dance you do as an artist, as your value, you know, with those values to, to paint some of that, that distance and stuff that you have there. Okay, so I'll work that. Now, what I'm gonna do is come in here and work some of those colors here. So there's a bit of these grays, but just a touch yellow, more yellow, that are right up here into the front so I'm going to, as I push some of this in, let's get just a bit of that gray and a bit of the light, some of this yellow. And I'm going to work this all in here like this. Right now it's going to be really similar to the rocks, just a little bit more great orange here. And so I'll push some of these colors in here like this, setting up some of this ground movement here. And there's some lights, so I'll pull some light colors across. See, I use that brush real flat and uh, just kind of pull that across there and leave a few of those streaks because that's just good linear perspective stuff, right? So I'll pull some of that here and we're going to add more rocks, build more rocks. And then as I come forward up here, we get more color, more things going on. And that's what's got to happen here. But in this reference photo, there's a real nice little slope right here. I think I'll put that in. I'll show you that. And then I'll, we'll do some painting, some uh, quick stuff getting it in. So I'll get more of an orangey color here and get a bit of light with it, but it's got to be uh, a bit more colorful, a bit brighter, more colorful here as I set in here, and I set my, my angle here is 
just a slight little slope. And so I stroked that too many times. I lost that beautiful streak. So I want to keep some of those streaks. Let's get some yellow, some other colors in there. So I keep that. See that change, that subtle change of tone? That's what keeps your landscapes pretty. So don't lose those, those subtle little those changes. Let's even add a bit of open medium here. And see, that's what's pretty. See that changing of those colors there. I do it at a slight little slope, which is what I'm reading off of the reference photo here. So I pull my brush at a slight angle that sets the slope. We're going to put that little river right in here, right on this side, which is going to work great. We'll push more, we'll have more bushes and more stuff going on right up here. So we'll let some of this just kind of, and see, this is the impressionistic edge that I just really love of it. I like to take these colors dirty on my brush and pull them, push up and down to create some of those bushes, some strong uh, horizontals though, every once in a while to, uh, you know, to, to keep that, uh, linear perspective as well here push some of that color around there like that this will come farther forward we'll keep this edge of line of the bushes here a bit right in there we'll let that river come right through there so maybe so the river is going to come like a little angle right here this little stream little you know in the photo it's a river bed but i'm going to add some water to it and then we'll angle it on this side over here, this way. And then that little riverbed will come through there. Like that. Okay, so you can see, as I come forward, I'm going to use more color. I'm going to use more uh, texture. I'm going to, and as I go back, I put it on thinner and head more atmospheric. More with the blues and grays and stuff into it that uh, uh, you see there. So... We'll work this, we'll work some, I love the open medium, especially as I head to, to shadows and stuff. I love the open medium to help give me some nice, we'll work on these rocks a bit to give me some nice, see the, the lovely interest that that open medium, that you feel like you're painting with paint, but yet you're getting all of these highs and lows and some of these other colors now can come off here. And you, it's a learning thing. You have to learn just how much, you know, open medium you're gonna, you're gonna use in your in your painting and stuff. But uh, so it's a, a bit of a learning process. But you can put it on heavy, just touch it, glaze it lightly, and put on light so you can get like two planes of your rock there. Let's put up a little bit of a lighter color, which will come right here, and. In the photo, in the nice reference photo, which I like, there's a small line of some bushes and stuff back here. So I'll be playing back and forth between my greens and grays, creating some little desert plant life in there. And uh, as we bring these rocks and stuff forward and stuff. So, and it works really well, okay? So that starts that in there. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take a little painting type. We'll play a little music. I'll let you see. I'm just going to use some of these techniques coming in, staying away from the atmospheric and coming this way on my palette, finally coming up here to, you know, maybe some of these burnt siennas and greens and a lot of yellows here. All of these are my forward areas, and this is the back of my landscape this way. So I'm going to come this way, okay? And... Uh, We'll show you a few little clips along the way as I kind of work in some of this area and I'm going to work on several layers of these rocks just using my brush and pulling that in there to give you some idea. I'm going to need to get some more stuff here in this rock so I can see how much I can do back there on those cliffs, okay? All right, let's take a few minutes and we'll watch some of that and I'll get this based in, all right? Okay.
Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, so I put some more on there, got some of this uh, color in here. This still needs a lot more development, but you can see I'm getting that look. And the more I do in here, the more I can do back there on that cliff, and so I want to be able to do that. One way to get more interest in here before we add the, the water is with the knife. And I start combining now, as I'm doing this, some of my knife, especially into the textures. As I come down to my palette, I got all of this wonderful mottled color here that uh, I used on rocks and all that kind of stuff. And I'll just scrape this all off here with my knife like this and kind of lay that here, kind of tap a little bit and lay some of that in. And that's going to give you some of this interest to the uh, riverbank. We'll model in some more light here with this. But uh, some of this, you can follow some of the slope you have here, see? And then I can so I can use my brush to soften it out if I, if I think that that is going to be necessary. But uh, I like some of this model. Now we're going to come in here and create the smaller, uh, you know, emulation of the of the rocks and stuff here along this water's edge here uh, with shadow more than anything else. But see, I'll build these textures up and build some of this stuff. It's got this undulated kind of bank here, and I'm just quickly putting that in to be suggestive of it. But a lot of paint, because it's the paint that's going to bring it forward. Now, let's go here, and I'll just use these colors that I have here. We'll uh, come in, we'll make a lighter, uh, sky kind of color. We had a lot of gray in it, and I want just a touch of violet color into this as well. So I add just a touch of my red violet here, and I'm going to use some extender because I want to put this on kind of thin right now. Um, Value-wise, we're going to be right about into the middle here. That's going to be probably a touch too blue, so uh, just a bit more violet in it. It depends on the angle, you know, the angle of the light. So I'm just going to push this across like this, right up into that, the edge. I'm going to go back and forth with the edge of what I'm going to have here is water and uh, my, uh, um, you know, little sandy edge here. And I'll push that in. I want this to be very trans uh, trans almost transparent, but. Uh, pushed back and forth in, into that. So I get a, a, a back and forth movement of the colors. And uh, we'll push some of this back over onto this other side. I'm going to work several colors in here. And the water will be one of the last things we do on the painting to finish because it'll carry a reflection. I imagine right in here it'll have a bit of the reflection of the, uh, the uh, little cliffs there. So, And then We'll get a bit more gray. I'm even going to take a bit of burnt sienna and some green over here. And and it'll get a little grayer, a little darker. You, you lose the sky. Depending on the angle, you lose the sky here. The sky, you know, water's transparent. So what you're actually seeing is reflections and sky. That's what makes water. And let's add a touch of yellow. So water is really kind of painted with everything around it. Let's push some of that over here. A little bit of yellow into that. Every once in a while, grab some of that blue back here again. I'll go back and forth. Now, one of the things that we do, that I do do with water quite a bit is, and I use my big brush, is pull down because that brings the reflection kind of stuff forward here. So it gives it even more an illusion here of water by that pulling down bit. You know, it's a quick way to do that here. There's other reasons, but that's, that's just a real quick way. We'll push that in. Let's push that right around. We'll build that. We'll build quite a bit of water and then build a hill and stuff into it. And so you pull that down and you, so then we're going to have the water there and then I'll come back with some of my lighter kind of sky here. Uh, maybe just a touch of that blue here. Lighter and just kind of set some uh, shines of that across in, in certain areas. And because that's what happens with water, you'll pick up some of that shine. Highs and lows of it here. And let's get a bit more shine, get a bit more of our aqua color from that sky and let's just pull some of that in so mostly it's it's sky some of the desert colors that we have here 
We'll pull that down. We'll paint this a couple times. I love to paint water. But so I'm going to pull this across here like this. And then I will just quickly with my big brush pull that down to give that reflection, the look of the reflection. You can calm it just a bit by pulling down. But I do like to have some of those verticals there for that reflection. So you look at that and you say, yeah, okay, that's getting some water back through there. There's some more things that we're going to do as I put bushes and stuff along here. Then I will uh, turn around and, uh, you know, add those back into the water. We want to put in some nice little uh, slopes and stuff and paint the, I'm going to paint what is called a disappearing edge here along the water. So you can't really see a sharp edge. So I'll paint my ground, my water out into the ground and the ground out into the water. So it kind of, kind of soft, it disappears a bit. Let's grab, boy, that's a powerful wind out there. I don't know if you can hear that. Hope we don't lose power. That'll be a bit of a bummer here. We'll push this edge right back there. But I'll paint this edge several times and let that water just kind of diminish back there. We'll paint this undulating edge here, push out some of this right out into the water, maybe just tap some of these uh, beautiful desert colors here out into the water here as well, here along this edge, see, just like that. And uh, so take some of them out here like that, that just gives you a nice interest here into the edge, see? So you'll pick up, it. it's hard to tell right in there where the, where the water is, where the, where the uh, shoreline is, and that's what makes really pretty, I think, undulating edges, you know, especially in uh, this type of, you know, we're trying to catch just in the idea, just the, the idea of it. Uh, and not paint it super realistic, but you know, leave. I like it to be a painting, and I like to have the the ideas and the edges of it and stuff here. So we'll use just a little corner here and tap along to give the little shadows for rocks and push that along a bit here. Get that edge out there like that. Really kind of fun here. Yeah, or just like that, just along that edge. And like I say, you know, I mean, we can take some of those colors, or just to show you, we can take a bit of that burnt sienna, some of those yellows, colors of those, uh, these nice cliff face here, and they would reflect right up in here. So, you know, we can leave a little bit of that blue, but we can reflect some of those here just blur that just a bit some of those colors see it's like a and you pick that up and you know you don't have to be perfect with it guys you don't have to be perfect because we're all used to uh, uh, seeing this type of stuff that water reflects this especially if you have 45 degree angle the water it reflects more you catch that reflection but we're all used to seeing that and so you don't have to be super accurate. They don't have a photo. No, the viewer doesn't have a photo that they're comparing it to. So don't, you know, don't destroy the freedom and the casual nature of your painting trying to get an exact copy because they're not going to have the photo there with it to, uh, to see it. So, you know, just get a, a you know, a, a representation of it. That's all you need. So, and that's, I guess, why they call it representational art. They... You don't need to have a, a good copy of it, you know. So let's take up just a touch bit of that lighter blue right here. A little bit more paint right in there. And uh, drop that in. So I'll build this a couple times. This is, this is an area which I like to do. I love to build those lights and shines and... And beautiful water I like to do that so I'll pull that across like that a couple times and just just lightly once or twice here pull down to grab that just that touch of that reflection there with that 
And so now what I'm going to do is continue on into here. I'm going to build up even more, another layer of this stuff. So I'll be looking at making some of these lighter and darker areas here. You know, taking uh, some of this light, which I want this nice light forward edge of this rock here. And boy, see some of that blue from that water has come out in my brush. That's what I love. And, uh, you know, so you could, if you want to get a lot more harmony to this, you could add some of those bluer tones here. But, you know, I referenced the, the, the photo there for some ideas about structure on the rocks. That's just a bit dark. So I'll just lighten it back up. And I like to work many colors back and forth. Slightly different calligraphy than what I did the first time to set up a little different type of shape on that rock. And... Um, you know, and it just, it's how much time now? It's just like, how much time are you going to put in this? Like this rock in the photo has a couple of ridges on it. And I do like that. So I'll just set up a couple of angled poles this way here to set up those ridges on that rock here. But, uh, you know, like I say, it's how much, how much time you're going to uh, paint on that. But that just starts to add more interest as you work more details in here thick paint you could uh, also this is where you know a lot of artists start using their knife to start laying on some of the textures and i start when i'm a good uh, a good 70 percent or so into the painting and i get a lot of that because i like to use that fusion very flat then i start to add some some of the the knife knife work to it because knife work is different especially up into the front you can see it just adds this little bit of fracturing on the rock which is really quite nice um, and so you can you can pull rock faces with some model color so if you have this color that's right in here and you're picking it up you know here onto your knife and then just look for those areas that you can add a, a touch of that with uh, to generate some more interest without without destroying too much of um, you know the colors that you have underneath and then I want to I want to work back up in here some of our greens uh, you know gray it out with some reds and add some grays here some light colors some green some burnt siennas here some of these and maybe even some yellows into some of this and you know, just if it's a little bit more forward, I won't model it up too. I mean, I won't mix it up too much here. Keep it kind of modeled. We'll add some other little colors working right in through here, which will add some, you know, more interest to these bushes and build them up. Shadows are really important. The burnt sienna green, maybe a bit of the blue and violet in there. Is that dark? But don't get it too dark if it's in that mid-plane area. Let's lighten that up just a bit. Adding just a bit of those plant shadows here are really important. And so the, these plants just kind of really help bring everything forward. We can even put just little bits of them back here. You know, little touches of them and then you can uh, you know, put some of that movement of the desert and stuff in between, which I'll just take a some burnt sienna with that and a little bit of yellow, some light color. Just tap the edges so that they soften out and just put some of that movement right there around that and that'll set them back in, okay? So it's a little touch. So we're gonna work that again, then we'll come back and we'll have time to uh, work on that cliff face with you and show you that, uh, show you that a little bit more. But more of these details up here so we can work on that cliff face, okay? All right, I'll see you in a minute. Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, as you can see from my palette here, I do little bits of, and slowly change the tones. I love the greens into the burnt sienna, the reds and the yellows, a little bit of blue sometimes makes these real dark colors. And then, you know, more of your yellows, oranges, some gray. Some of you don't forget to put in some of your gray, some of your sky color in here. And then you just work those colors in small amounts, small touches and stuff. And the more time, you know, you can see just subtle changes of the tone. The more time you put into it, the better your rocks will be. I use mostly this and a little bit of the number eight fusion flat and a little bit of my knife 
working just a few uh, edges there. But that sets that up and I'm pretty happy with it, at least so much so that I can go back here and show you guys some here. I can always come back and work on it some more. Uh, but uh, now we can come back and we can work back up here uh, into this. First thing I'm gonna do, and I, I like those transparency. Now, I'm gonna preserve some of this back here, but you can just take a damp paper towel. This is what's really nice about the heritage. I don't have to get rid of all of it. Just clean myself up an area that I can work some nice darks here on the um, uh, for for those those back hills back there, I mean those back cliffs back there and I just use a little damp paper towel and it'll just wipe it off so we know we can go let's the burnt siennas we know we kill that gray with some of our greens here let's add some open medium to this at least an equal amount so that um, we get this nice transparency to it the dragging that we're going to be doing here with our with our brush and so we'll add that and then we'll just kind of pull down I'm going to look at where some of those shadows are reinforce some of these shadows right here um bit of a, a bit of an edge here you know coming this way which brings up that side here of this uh, rock face right here and I want to give it kind of broken these are just kind of fun to paint. Make sure you get some, you know, read every once in a while, you're gonna see some nice horizontals. And what's nice about all that equal amount of open medium is you don't paint out everything that you did in the other layer here. We gotta be careful not to get too dark there, but you know, in the photo and the reference, they're pretty dark. You can always tap it with a paper towel, take some of that off, but keep lots of open medium in this because you don't wanna, get this too dark it's better to work it a couple times you know bringing in your uh, darkness than it is to go too much here um, well there's that nice uh, ridge of dark right through here now for these ridges of dark like with this one right here I did this light color with my palette knife you can always take your palette knife just pick up a little bead of that just like that and use that knife just like that. That puts in that nice, a nice, t you know, a detail of that ridge, which carries on here. Got to pick up a little more paint. It's easier to paint when you use paint. Here, we'll put that extra little ridge right there and there. There's another one up a bit higher. Let's add some open medium to this so that we don't get it super opaque. It just comes right along through here, and I'll. I sometimes you'll see me use the knife uh, very flat. Sometimes I roll it down to widen the line a bit or break it up. You can come through and scratch through just a bit to to break that, change that uh, the look of it. There's another one all the way up here by the top. It comes through different layers of the sediment here the rocks one or two back here but we'll keep these a bit softer so just lightly push those through right back there into the back you can also use like I've showed you before in some of the other southwest paintings you can also use your fusion I use my fusion pulling across on some of those just using the angle there like that pulling across and that works well so Either way, now let's get that, that deeper shadow, which is gonna be on this side, those rocks, and pulls down here. So that's the shadow side. Light is coming from upper left. Uh, and you know you can tell that because it's hitting this light face here. And uh, so we'll just bring out a, a little bit of architectural things here onto it. Just the suggestions of it, I'm not gonna get like I said, I'm not going to get wild and crazy with this. I'm going to keep this very impressionistic. But you can. You can get more details in there. But that open medium just gives you, you know, it like does half the painting for you if you just mix it up and let that modeling there and uh, just kind of drag one way like this and then a few pull downs. You see, and it just does that, that detailing for you. That's really nice. Let's pull down this side here, bit on that one, and make sure we get this nice little 
edge there so you can see the light edge of it and some touches some horizontals some verticals here and you can like I say you can spend more time more detail that's all up to you how much you put in you know it's uh, I'm gonna keep this kind of simplistic I like to try to keep paintings like this you know it's within uh, you know I worked on I worked on these rocks about another 30 minutes or so and so I like to keep paintings like this somewhere around two to three three hours or so in you know they're they're quicker paintings this is still a quicker paint what I would consider a quicker painting I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna and yellow and light here um, you know the studio paintings I put a lot more into but I would probably increase the size of this if I was doing a full-on studio painting and so now you can tap some of the lights and generally you know when I when I do the lights I get a more opaque and more color and stuff into them but you know this one um, this one where we are um, not putting as much work into it so you know I but you can so if I was you know if you want to turn this into a, a really nice painting say you want to increase the size of it and do a nice painting then get your your remember the rule get your uh, lights opaque and your shadows stay transparent pull some of these uh, you know pull some nice verticals here pull a few horizontals across just to break up that vertical and you got these side faces of it that you'll see here and like I say, I'll put the photo in the, the membership area so you can uh, get a really nice um, idea how to uh, paint something like this. Because it is there is a lot of detail that you could add to this painting, which I'm not going to. But you can. Just real quick ones like this. You know, it's uh, a lot of my students sell paintings like this, uh, quicker ones that they put the the work into and uh, they can you know they can sell it for they can get a really nice look in a couple hours there we go and still have a, a reasonable cost painting for your customers so a little light just right across leave you know just tap that through you could you know what a lot of what a lot of artists would do is you know when you're coming in here working this you would if I was to bring these even more forward I'd use my uh, you know my knife on some of that the knife knife details are wonderful so they you know you could use your knife on that we could add a touch more light keeping and you know I see you can see that kind of texture I'm looking at my monitor there to see if, if you guys can see that yeah you can kind of see a little bit of texture here and uh, that just adds so much to the painting here when you, you take that extra second to do that. And, but you know, like in, a, in the original there, there's another like little ridge line coming right down there on this side and a bit of that shadow. And you know, in a quick painting, even a plain air painting, you might not capture all of that detail. And this one you might you know, you, you can make, you know, different levels, how much you want to do. But pull slow, right? Remember what I say, pull slow so that you don't blend those things out too much. And you can bring out little rock faces and stuff like that here. Like you see in the, uh, in the uh, um, original or in the reference photo here. Uh, this is Arches Natural Park, and so some of you, you can... Go find uh, some of these photos as well, but uh, I like this one, and then I and then I modified it by adding the more of the river. So we'll add just a bit of that in there. That'll be fine. Let's take just a touch more dark right down through there. Get that slightly more orangey. Maybe just make that orange out of yellow and the red, so it's just a touch more brighter, warmer here. And here, the 
vary your tones. That's the prettiness of it. See, if I was, you know, going to do this as a full painting, I would vary quite a bit of my tones and uh, amount of details that I show. But see, I get that extra little bit in there, just like that, and that extra little warmer tone that I do see in there just does something to the painting, just really nice. Let's put just a whisper of that in here. But most of it, and this is one of the things about these types of paintings, most of it, I let most of the painting be done with the shadows, really. I like to, I like to draw and, and uh, refine areas with shadows as opposed to lights. Um, because the shadows just add so much interest because it's the contrast color up against the sky. Now let's just take some of that pull some of that across this way so we get the feeling of some of that horizontal movement across those those uh, rock lines there like that and that's kind of nice so we'll put a bit more of that get a, at least an equal amount of that open medium in there or faux medium you could use or you could like I've showed you in other videos you could gel extender and use that lots of ways and we're all individual artists so we'll all find different ways that we like let's put a bit of rocks right underneath there that line there so you can just quickly emulate it you don't need to get specific let's pull down a bit of that structure that's that one here a couple of lines there, in that structure, a couple of, you can do more chisel of the brush, a few lines that way, a couple of lines that way, some heavier shadow lines, which I really like, pulling down here like that, there you go. And uh, let's pick up just a little heavier color. See what this is going to do for us on this shadow side here. Here we go. Bit of a line right there. Nice breaking line in the rock. Bring that one out. So I'm quick. I'm I'm glancing up to my reference photo. So all I'm doing is just glancing up, looking at an area, and then just emulating it without copying it too close. That's all I'm. That's all I'm doing there on those rocks. So I just try to emulate it without copying too much. I you know I have a tendency if I copy too much. And I haven't. I've told some of you this. If I copy too much, I it becomes very stiff and stuff. So I, that's why I try to paint with a certain amount of speed, and uh, you know, and I try not to copy because, you know, it'll just become stiff as I work an area and work an area. It just becomes stiff. So that's that's looking kind of good, like that arches there, and uh, let's put some more of this right down here. So it supports that uh, angle. Now I, I bring back, remember we, you know, let's go back hour, hour and a half or so there. And uh, remember we put that angle in here, that first slope. We'll restate that slope here. And just some light orange and model that with some burnt sienna so you get some differences here there we go sets up some of that and see there's in the photo you'll see like little splashes of rocks and stuff like that on there and I don't think in this one I'll, I'll get that detailed but you certainly could we'll pull across See, if you, the more detail, like if I was going to put more detail in here, I'd take like this color that I'm just doing right now. And I would start the lights again in here a bit more, um, <clears throat> a bit more opaque, see? And you work them again. And this is what I do with the studio painting. I set the lights 
and I'll set those up and drag that up and let those more opaque lights sit right on top of those transparent shadows there as you're working some of those faces see and you get some really nice looks that is let's put bring this face out just a bit so you just drag that down some, and then hit it with a few horizontals so it's not just the vertical line and hit a couple of areas there to break up some of those faces see and you just and it's that's all it is it's just how much work you're going to put into the uh, into the painting here there's a couple of horizontal lights coming this way through this area we can just quickly kind of emulate those and um, there we go, like that. This is just because of that open medium on the air. It's really slippery. And if you like that, those of you that painted the ship and you saw, saw how I did, you know, some of the waves with that open medium, how I, I like and and even using the knife and, and gliding along that, you can use that same technique for here. So. When you watch the videos, you know, there's so many people like, oh, I don't want to paint a ship. Well, in that you're going to learn a lot of different techniques and you may apply those techniques to something here that, you know, especially those of you that are looking for your own looks. You know, it's like, you know, everyone says, oh, you paint roses to, you know, so well, you know, what did you learn to study roses? Portraits. Portraits. I studied portraits and I studied the ocean painting, <laughs> but portraits, most of the techniques that I use are Premier Coup and all the Prima portrait type techniques that uh, are used. And then I just applied those techniques right to, um, right to the, the painting, to the, um, the roses that I, I like to do. And, uh, it works. So see here, I can build up some of this other color just a little heavier and start to, I lost a bit of that line there. And I just wanted to show you how to put it on again. <laughs> Use that knife and that little edge there, nice little broken edge. There's the nice line. Let's build it right back in there again. One more little time, just boom. That's pretty good. So you can see that gets a, a bit more interest and we could uh, tap, you know, in the reference photo there, there's some like light colored rocks and stuff like that that are showing up here onto the sides. And you can put a few of those on and just tap around them with some uh, shadow and you'll, you know, add a few of those, the looks of some of those rocks and stuff like that there. Um, let's go back here to the back. We'll take this with the open medium in it here and we'll thin it now also with some um, nice extender. We'll work these back hills back here. Here just uh, get a bit. I like that shadow in there so we'll redefine that shadow. Now that we have a, a bit more darker color up into the uh, front we can we can see what a little more shadow will do back here get just a bit of the verticals and the touches there but I want to I got it to adjust a touch dark for that uh, what I want to do right here so I'm just going to lighten that back up and the way to really do it and is to add your atmosphere right Always add your atmosphere to recede something. So, but I think I'm just a touch dark. I think I'm still okay. And I could bring uh, the darkness of this line right here, right all the way down. And that would help with that, uh, sending that other little mountain back there into the back. But uh, it's so funny on the photo, you don't see a whole bunch of, of detail back here, but on the, uh, monitor I pick up all kinds of little color and detail back here and I'm just going to add a bit of it with that nice open medium just a, a little bit so it just doesn't look too flat just a touch and I don't want to get too much let's add a few
few streaks here. That open medium just streaks this, and you get this lovely, you know, it's what a lot of all of Prima artists talk about, you know, loving to start with oils because of the, the high oil content that you get, and you get this transparency and this translucency to the colors. Well, the open medium gets us this right away with that. So if you want to emulate that start look with that a lot of oil artists use, and I was an oil artist for years, but the, that you use to start, you can do it though with the open medium here, just like that, because it gives it that light passage and translucency. And see, just real quickly, you can set up some depth back there. Now let's, um, you don't see much of a shadow, except for right here you see a shadow, and that shadow continues on here. Let's get that slightly green here. Push a bit of that right up there. Just some little touches of that. And uh, just a, maybe a bit of the lighter color. I don't want to, you know, see the lights and it starts to put on more paint. And more paint starts to advance that. So we don't want to get too carried away here, Dave. Here, we'll just soften that back there. Maybe just a little hit of it there. There, that's enough. There. We'll just leave this there and let this back here just stay that soft. We can even take some of that light, thin it. So I use my colors really thin. I start adding that extender back here into the back. So not the open medium, the extender, so that my colors are really thin. I'll put some of this other color on here. And uh, then we'll lighten that up. Here, orange that just a bit. That light color will get more atmospheric. And you can get that sky in there to get it even more. There. And so you can see that nice light really sends it back. And we can model back through here with some of that light, just highs and lows of that light. And then you'll get that real desert look to that. There, see that highs and lows back there, really into the back back there. And uh, and, and plan your stair-stepping. So see, this is, the, this is the darkest color. Dark colors advance. So this is the darkest color here. And then... This is the darkest color into this plane, and then this darkest color into this plane, and then this is the darker color yet, the darkest color of the painting. Now I'm going to revisit just a couple of few areas here and play a little artistic license to send just part of this just a little lighter or a little higher so I get a better, it's not just a flat plateau there, it has a little more interest a little more height interest to it. And uh, just bury that just a bit there. That's pretty good. I like this misty area along through here. And I'm really, overall, I'm not too uh, displeased with the sky itself. The, you know, leaving this more of a blue and stuff. It's kind of thing. But this let me show you here. Let's take our big two-inch brush. We'll put some, uh, and I have a, a, just a little bit of that dirty color in there, and which I'm going to leave. See that little bit of dirty that I used when I pulled down some of the water and stuff? It picked up some of the other color. And I'm just going to leave that here. I love doing this kind of stuff. But this, when I usually do glazes and little things like this, I use dirty brushes. And so you get a little carrying of the color, so you'll pick up some of this stuff. I used to be so clean about everything I did and my paintings just looked boring <laughs> you know I mean they were just so stiff and uh, so now I, I I work on you know using dirty brush use your dirty palette and that just helps you so much let's put a little more blue let's get some blue some gray some white out here we'll redefine we'll add some open medium to this and We'll thin it with some extender here. Big brush of this. 
slightly different color here. See, it's got a little dirtiness from that oranges from my from my painting, and that's kind of pretty. Um, the sky is carrying, uh, and I'll just blur it through like this, see, and then streak that through. Use that paper towel. Paper towels are wonderful because they're not perfect, you know. And so we'll just pull through like that, see. Pull it, leave some of that nice movement, that nice atmosphere, and it pulls through. Now, there's I can back some of that back out and find that that more powerful blue, which I want to do, or I can take a more powerful blue, step off over here to the side. Let's get it a little bit lighter, or just a little bit more powerful, just a touch of extender. Find that, see, little streaks of more powerful blue in there. It's atmosphere, it's what I like to, you know, I like this type of atmosphere into the painting, and you know, a real nice, if you really want to bring that, um, uh, you know, you've seen me, for example, in the birds, bird portraits and stuff. I always say to you, when you're painting the sky back behind the head of the bird, you come back in and, you know, you you paint right around, negative paint around some of those areas that you want to, that with the sky, that you want to bring out. Well, you know, we do that like right here to bring out part of that, that mountain shape right there right up in there and <clears throat> we could make that just a touch lighter so I'll just put some light into my brush here pull that down in I really uh, you know suggest you do this kind of stuff in your focal areas here and we'll just model that down let's add a little extender thin that model that down take your paper towel and pull that down this like a little atmosphere there. Leave some of those blue streaks. Leave a bit of those streaks. That's the atmosphere that we want to capture here. See? And, uh, yeah, there's some really pretty, um, like over on this side, you can pull that blue right up to the edge there. And then tap in some lighter color. That nice... Uh, light color right in there so we haven't painted any clouds any interest and in stuff from the clouds but you can get some nice interest here blur some of the edges a little bit get some nice interest here before we do i might do a little bit of those high cirrus kind of wispy clouds there and uh, just pull some of that around yeah that's good we can so if you feel like you're too much an angle, you can pull just a bit this way. Look at that lovely atmosphere that gives into that, that sky there. And then let's take some white. Real soft clouds are light blue. That's all, you know, a lot of times you hear me use violets as well, um, but basically light blue. And so let's just put a real high kind of just whispery cloud. Just let the color run off. So I start first with where I want the color the most and then I just lift the pressure on the brush and just kind of whisper that off. There's a high cloud right there. Nice. Let's pick up some more white. Maybe a touch of open medium in it will make it go a little easier as well. Let's put one right back here. Right down towards that point. Right there. Right in towards that one. Some of that just whispers off there just real whispery little clouds like it's in the reference photo that I really like there's a little one pulling right across here maybe just a bit of it and that just helps that whole atmosphere of your sky there you know you just pick up that and you can hit the light source and that's one of the things I do believe in hitting with the clouds hit the light source right where the cloud where the light is on the cloud I don't want to make it too big and powerful there. Just a little whispery. Just some of that little movement there. I do like doing that. Let's put just a bit of that right on the edge. So, you know, you can just pull it horizontally right here and just give the impression of some 
real whisper clouds here towards the back as they go back along that horizon line there really easy to paint now I did hit in a few areas right there which I will probably take my brush here and just clean up those areas restate that bit of the dark and then some orange lighter orange for the light and now so those are the techniques I use for it and now it's just a matter of you know how much you're going to put into your painting you know how much you you want to do into your painting because it's yours yeah that's good just a bit of that remember it will dry down that gives you that kind of look there to arches but you know you could put in a lot more you know some more interest and stuff some smaller little shadow lines and interest and stuff right in here into this one just pull down and pull across a bit that's all up to you how much you want to put in there's just and then go to some more of those opaque lights but you look at that and yeah that's capturing pretty much what I wanted to capture I love that soft sky like that there and this moves back really nice you know you can take a little bit of that cloud color which is you know the water in the front is always a reflection you don't want to get too precise but a little bit of that cloud color and just whisper a bit of that right in there just blur that off and that again helps the the movement just a little bits of it helps the movement and stuff like that okay so another thing you know harmony harmony and landscapes okay harmony and landscapes and basically the harmony here is this this color that's carried all the way through the painting but you could you know if you wanted to get even more harmonious and make this you could take your blues right into your uh, these blue colors that are here even into a little violet violets you see me use violets a lot and in the last southwest paintings I did with you I used violets but you could add little touches this would be artistic you don't always see this but you can add little touches of like the blues and stuff right over here little hits see these little hits right there you see those little tiny hits and maybe maybe some open medium into it so it stays transparent or even uh, thin it with some uh, uh, you know extender here just little hits of it and touch that every once in a while a little bit of those into your rocks and you'll get a better harmony through your painting so you just go through and touch you know hit every once in a while where the eye will subtly pick up those little bits of blue and that's just one way to uh, bring some of it together I have a bit of that light that I can bring right along through there there's just lots of stuff if you want to just keep working and working on this you could just keep working and working on it but blue taking that sky down and into this it's a cool color so keep it most towards you know in the rock like I've showed you in all the other kinds of videos we have the light plane a receding plane and a shadow plane and so I keep it mostly to would this would be a receding area receding planes don't put the light blue because it's cool don't put it up into the light area keep the little touches down in the receding areas and uh, shadow areas and this little touches like that just add so much and you can play with that okay lots of stuff okay hope you enjoyed it so here's the southwest one so um, I do have the American uh, Kestrel uh, bird of prey that one all done I still have that portrait really that I got to get to you guys to I have that, that Louisiana church <laughs> that I want to do and I've been promising everybody another Western so I I think uh, this I think well maybe this weekend I'll start up that Western I'll start filming another uh, nice uh, not as big as long as I did the last one but a quicker Western we can do in just a couple hours and uh, we'll get that banged out too because a lot of you really enjoyed those westerns so and there's a lot of stuff we can do with westerns a lot of stories we can tell with westerns and so so uh, and landscapes and thank you so much for those of you that really wrote me some nice comments and some nice emails about the trawler you really enjoyed that trawler and um, so there's some uh, some older masters that painted the sea and painted the um, um, 
that I studied down the National Gallery and I studied also over in the Louvre and Paris that painted a lot of some of those nautical themes. And I think maybe we'll dive into one of those if you would like. If you want to see something like that, just write me a comment on there. Because they're really kind of fun because they're wonderful techniques, a little bit different than what we use here. And you take those techniques and you apply them to other things, guys. Okay? You're, we're studying art. Good art. Good techniques. Good rules of seeing. Good ways to develop depth. How to get different types of edges. Edges are so important. That's what's going to make you a better artist. It doesn't make it, you know, it's like I tell everybody, how did I get better at roses? I didn't sit down and practice. Yes, you have to practice roses. But I painted other things to learn to use my brush other ways to change the way in which I paint rose. If you paint rose, 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 you're always going to paint it the same because you're not experiencing a change. Does that make sense? Okay. So it's good for us to study together and paint all these different types of genres, all these different things, paint some of those animals, paint some of those birds, paint seascapes, paint this stuff. Learn using your brush in all different kinds of ways and to keep it away from a habit. And that's what causes you to do, you know, nice things and faster things, okay? All right, thanks very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks ever so much to all my members that are on the channel, that are supporting the channel, that are allowing us to do some new things. We're in the mix of remodeling and building our new filming studio that is gonna, you know, I was gonna start these beginning classes and we're gonna do it in the new studio and uh, some of your support is allowing us to do that. So thank you ever so much. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Let me know whether it's a Western, whatever it is, you guys, let me know what the next one is and I'll put it up. And I do have that American Castro, too. Lots of stuff. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks so much. And you have a great painting day. Take care. Bye-bye.